About 15% of adult common colds are caused by corona viride. Most important subtypes include SARS-CoV, which was responsible for the severe acute respiratory syndrome of 2002 to 2004. MERS-CoV, which was responsible for the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome of 2012. And last but not least, SARS-CoV-2 for the coronavirus disease of 2019 or COVID-19. These three subtypes are specifically beta coronaviruses. They cause mild upper respiratory and gastrointestinal tract infections. So for the GIT, it's particularly the SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV. Right, so initially the causative agent for coronavirus in 2019 was uh, referred to as novel coronavirus or new coronavirus because it was an absolutely new strain to be detected in humans. Later on, they realized that the SARS-CoV-2 which is the causative agent for COVID-19, actually shares identity for about 79.5% to SARS-CoV genome. So this SARS-CoV is uh, the one which was responsible for the 2002 to 2004 endemic. Right. Genome sequencing shows 96.2% identity to a bat coronavirus RATG13, right? And this is your bat, making the best, the most likely natural host for the SARS CoV 2 origin. Above that, studies propose that the SARS CoV 2 is a recombinant virus between a bat coronavirus and an unknown coronavirus strain, right? So, to explain this, I have uh, the following diagram. This is representing the coronavirus of the bats. And this is representing the coronavirus for the humans, right? So since they are saying they are, there is about 96.2% identity, so it means there might be a way in which this coronavirus of the bats ended up infecting the humans, right? So this second point is saying there might be a, a way or an intermediate host which helped this process of mutating the coronavirus of the bats so that it will be able to, uh, to affect humans, right? So it's saying there might be an intermediate host which we don't know here, right? Uh, and some sources uh, earlier on, they suggested it to be something like a pangolin or any other animal that was at the weight market. No, we're not talking about that in this video. Right. Uh, so this whole process, this whole process of mutations until the virus is able to infect humans is known as homologous recombination. The coronavirus on the electron microscope, they appear like crowns, right? That's why they are called Corona. So here I indicated the crowns for you. These viruses are linear positive sense single stranded RNA viruses. They have a helical nucleocapsid and they have an envelope, plus, they are non segmented. Okay, so now let me explore further uh, the proteins which are found on, the, on this envelope, right? Firstly, you can see this green protein, right? This green protein. They are called spike proteins or S protein, right? And this red one uh, is actually called hemagglutinin esterase or HE protein. And this purple one is called envelope protein or simply E protein. And last but not least, this yellow protein is called a matrix protein or M protein. This is not a pathophysiology video, but I just want to tell you two entry points used by this virus. The first one is called 
angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or S2. And the second one is the transmembrane protease serin 2 or TMPRSS2. Right, so these uh, proteins are actually found like on host cells, primarily uh, the type 2 pneumocytes of the, in the lungs. Now let's talk about transmission of the coronavirus. Firstly, there is a main-to-main -main transmission, and this is primarily via respiratory droplets, thus uh, sneezing and coughing. Secondly, via aerosols. Uh, this is because infectious concentrations of viral particles were detected in aerosols for a duration of three hours, and they, they said uh, these particles could last even longer than three hours. And also, direct contact transmission, uh, especially hand-to-face contact. Right, so here is, here is the reason why we are encouraged to wash our hands with alcohol-based um, detergents, uh, because, uh, as I mentioned before, this virus is an envelope, so it can actually be killed uh, by those detergents, right? And also, we are not allowed to shake hands unnecessarily because uh, we can get it uh, through uh, shaking hands. And the most scary one is through fomites, right? So by saying fomites, we mean just uh, surfaces. So viral particles remain infectious uh, on surfaces outside a host for up to a few days, depending on materials. For example... On latex, aluminium, or copper, the viral particles can uh, survive for up to eight hours. On cardboard, they can survive for uh, about 24 hours. On countertops, plastics, stainless steel, here they can last for one to three days. And last but not least, on wood and glass, uh, and here they will last for about five days and one more thing since they are saying uh the sars cov 2 shares about 79.5 percent uh with the sars cov the one responsible for what for 2002 to 2004 endemic so it might be possible for fecal oral transmission Now let's talk about the clinical features of the coronavirus. The incubation period is 2 to 14 days, right? And the cases are often asymptomatic, so it is difficult to tell whether uh, a person is infected and isolate that person in time, right? And this aspect of asymptomatic cases is assumed to be more likely in children considering the number of children who have been or those who are still being infected by the coronavirus. Right. So if the symptoms are present, the symptoms can be divided into three groups. The most common symptoms, the common symptoms, and less common symptoms. Most common symptoms include fever, fatigue, and dry cough. Common symptoms include shortness of breath, that's dyspnea, and uh, anosmia. Anosmia is loss of smell and sometimes is the only symptom that can appear. And of course, test, if you know your physiology, test is 90% smell. Okay. The other symptom is loss of appetite and Myalgia. Myalgia is muscle pain, right? Or just feeling of discomfort, right? Okay, uh, then the less common symptoms include uh, GIT symptoms like diarrhea and abdominal pain. And also sputum production, rhinitis, and sore throat. Then in children, children who are infected with the coronavirus or those who have recovered 
they present with features of toxic shock syndrome and Kawasaki disease. Now let's conclude this video by talking about the diagnosis, right? So the best method so far is reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. The specimen or samples used are nasal or pharyngeal swabs and also sputum and or bronchoalveolar lavage, right? So this test actually detects the, the viral genome region specific for SARS-CoV-2, right? So this uh, polymerase chain reaction, it actually detects the RNA of this virus. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss any of our latest videos because we will be uploading videos almost each and every day. Until next time, head bowed.